All right, am I am I all good? You're good. Amazing. Uh, that looked delicious, Alvaro. Um, yes, welcome to Toronto. Um, and if you could see more of my apartment, you'd be seeing all of it. So I am right downtown. Um, but I'm really happy that everyone's here today. I hope that everyone is safe and well. Um, yeah, so I'm really excited to show you some of the stuff that actually I've been making quite a bit uh, because it's all about comfort food right now, even when it comes to these celebratory times. And I'm going to be using the Nor Culinary Cream or, as Dana mentioned, cream soup base in the U.S. Um, really fantastic product. So, of course, it is the replacement for heavy cream or bechamel. So, really important, especially during this time, whether it's healthcare or other channels. Um, just whether there is lack of dairy, you're not going through as much as you were, you're worried about it expiring in time. Uh, to make a bunch of your different sauces. And of course, it's an ag water only product. So what I'm making today is a bolognese style kind of sauce, truffle cream sauce lasagna. If that doesn't sound gluttonous, I don't know what does. Uh, of course, my variation is gluten-free. I think Dana had brought that up before that I'd probably be doing something gluten-free. Um, I've been told by a pasta lover in the house that actually the gluten-free noodles tend to cook up a little bit better as well. They have a really nice texture to them. So let's get to it. Uh, first, I'm going to do my kind of cheap bolognese sauce. Uh, we have, of course, our mirepoix, so our carrots, onion, and celery. Sorry for turning my back to you. I'll try to do this sideways. Clearly, my kitchen was not set up for food demos. So we have our mirepoix in there. There's a little bit of olive oil in there as well. Now prior to that, if you wanted to, what I like to do is take my meat mixture. So traditionally, it would probably be some pancetta, beef, veal, pork, cook that off. And then I like to remove it from a pan and of course use all of that fatty goodness to cook my mirepoix in. I know, makes me think of Rudy's bacon fat mushrooms that we just saw. I think I was drooling a little bit when he was uh, talking about that. So we're gonna saute those all. And of course, tons of garlic, tons and tons of garlic. I'm sure my house smells, two people in this house, we've been going through two bulbs of garlic every week. Um, if not, of course you can use Nora Intense Flavors uh, Roast. Um, it's also a really great way to get a lot of those really sweet caramelized onion and garlic notes in there too. So we have the mirepoix going, we have the garlic. We're gonna do some of our tomato paste. So, so far, pretty basic, pretty standard. Um, and then what we will do, of course, is I have a little bit of red wine here. We'll take that and deglaze with it. Um, if you don't want to use wine, of course you could use some sort of red wine vinegar, um, some sort of juice, something that has a little bit of acidity to it to kind of balance out all the other flavors that are going in there. So you probably can't hear that, but it did the really nice noise. Um, and then, of course, you know, we're pretending you're fabulous on television um, that that's been simmering for a little bit we're gonna add our beef stock. So I actually already happen to have this in my fridge, um, is the Nor liquid concentrated beef base. So it is a concentrated base that uh, you just add water to for about a liter of prepared stock. Sorry, I'm going metric here. Um, you add approximately 30 milliliters of the prepared stock. Of course you can add smaller amounts, more amounts, depending on how strong you want it. But of course, always watching out for the sodium, especially because we already have our meats in here as well. So we're gonna pretend that I measured this. <laughs> I'm sure I'm not the only one that's guilty of the free form. Definitely not. <laughs> so you can see, I don't even need to mix that. That's the beauty of it, right? Um, and of course, that's also an ambient product. So even once open, you can keep that on the line enhanced sauces with the whatever you like. So adding the stock in there. 
So what I would typically do at this point is I would be adding some bay leaves to it, let it simmer for a little bit. I'm gonna do that now. Um, and then I would remove the bay leaves after about a half an hour and I would use um, an immersion blender because I kind of want this thicker sauce, get all the vegetables kind of broken up, and then add some of the nor intense earth. So usually with a bolognese, I would let it go for like two hours to really develop a lot of those flavors. Um, the nor intense flavors, of course, helps give you that really impactful flavor right away. And I find that the earthy, so this is all mushroom based, works really, really well with tomato sauces. So it cuts through that acidity of it and gives it like really nice round flavors. So that of course is a concentrated liquid seasoning, which is why the bottle is that size. And we're still sticking with gluten-free. Every, everything so far has been gluten-free. Um, and after I add that, of course, I would throw back in my meat, let it simmer for a little bit more, and then bolognese, done. All right. Where does the Nor culinary cream come in? Or cream soup base? Um, so now I'm doing my truffle cream sauce. I don't know why I did this, <laughs> but my truffle <laughs> um, So we have a little bit of oil in here. I'm gonna throw in some butter because why wouldn't you? And I think we already talked about the idea that these are celebratory recipes, right? We're going to indulge. Um, so with the cream soup base or the culinary cream, the great thing about this too is it can actually be prepared hot or cold as long as in the end you actually heat up the product that it's in. So what I would do is I've taken my um, cup and an eighth and a cup of the powder mix. So you can actually, you don't have to make the whole bag. There's no particulates in it. Um, if you do make the whole bag, um, that is 5.5 liters for this entire bag. Um, again, sorry with the metric, but if you wanted to just do a liter of product, it's a cup and an eighth. So I'm just gonna mix this up. Super easy. Like I said, you can heat it up or you can do it cold. If I wasn't adding any other ingredients to this, but I was adding it to my final take and bake dish, I would just add it cold because it thickens up right away. So you already know what the consistency is gonna be like, um, which makes it super, super easy. So I'm also gonna add some garlic into this olive oil butter situation. I honestly can't think of anything that I like the smell of better than butter and garlic. Oh wait, maybe it's the white wine I'm gonna put into it. So those are gonna kind of help be that build onto the culinary cream. Um, it has a very, very neutral taste to it. A little bit of buttermilk note coming through, but it really helps with the versatility of the product. The other thing that's nice about this, as opposed to traditional dairy formats, is that you can also freeze it and reheat without it splitting. So really, really easy to use, can use in a variety of different places, um, but that makes it really nice to use for these types of take and bake so that you can either sell your lasagna fresh um, or you can sell it frozen. And you know that it's not gonna degrade the quality of the product. So I'm gonna add that to my wine, butter, and garlic. All my favorite things together. So just give that a little bit of a mix. It doesn't need to be on there very long because again, you're going to be cooking the lasagna at the end of the day. Um, I'm adding some parm because why not? Um, of course, there's different ways that we can add truffle flavor. Um, some are more expensive than others. I picked up an oil, really inexpensive. Um, it's nice to not have that overpowering truffle flavor, but just something that's a little essence that makes your bechamel sauce a little bit more complex. Um, Cause then at the end of the day, this is a very traditional lasagna dish. So we're just gonna add a little bit there. So that's really it um, for the two sauces. You saw how easy it was. At the end of the day, um, 
This would be your lasagna. I sparkled, sprinkled more Parmesan on top. Um, the nice thing too, like I said, is I use gluten-free no-cook noodles. Um, and especially with the no-cook, if they've been sitting in the sauce for a while, it's, it has really good texture whenever somebody will heat it up at home. Um, of course, this can be forayed into a bunch of different channels depending on what sorts of ingredients you want to put in there. And uh, yeah, I was also going to say if you want to just sell the sauces as is, is also a great option to use, um, as well as making things like cannelloni with this, um, maybe just putting some of the bolognese at the bottom, having some ricotta, maybe rapini in the center, rolling it up, and then putting the bechamel on top, um, or even a baked pasta dish with just different types of noodles. Awesome. And that, and I've seen a lot of that where we're selling uh, sauces on the side to make yeah. extra dishes at home. Especially because a lot of people don't have, I mean, they don't have the time where they want to build the flavors of all these sauces, right? They're fine, they, they're fine cooking their own pasta, but it really does help things out a lot. Um, and then cocktail to go with it. So this one is probably more Mother's Day focused, um, but it is using the Tazo Passion Tea Concentrate. Um, I have some lemonade in there, so a lot of you have probably had the Passion Tea and Lemonade partnered together before, but then they really fell in love when champagne or Prosecco or sparkling wine was added to it. So super easy, lots of flavor, really pretty color. I will be enjoying this later. <laughs> not too long from now. <laughs> Kyla, thank you so much. We are thank going you. to